The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. First Canto, Third Chapter, Text Number 10, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 16th of September, 1972, in Los Angeles, California. So, Sham Kham. Sham Kham means, Sam means complete. Kham means, Description. Complete description of creation. Kalavipradam. There is complete description how this cosmic manifestation is created. But people forget it. Kalavipradam. So this knowledge is existing since the time of creation. Everything materially created, has got six stages. The first stage is creation. And the second stage is growth. The third stage is maintenance. The fourth stage is production. The fifth stage is dwindling. And the sixth stage vanished. This is anything material. The scientists, they are very much busy. Just this morning, our scientist, Sarup Damodar, is speaking about an article. The scientists are very much busy that the source of supply is being decreased. Just like petroleum, petroleum gas, that is diminishing. The whole modern materialistic civilization is depending on the motor cars and aeroplanes, transportation. If the petroleum supply is stopped, then what will be the condition of the society? Huh? Formerly there was no need of going to see a friend at thirty miles away because every friend was within the village. Now because we have got motor car, we create friendship with a man who lives fifty miles away. We accept a job fifty miles away in Hawaii. Our Gosundar was going to attend office fifty miles off. By fifty miles off, in big, big cities uh, like New York, Calcutta, we have seen people are coming to attend their office from hundred miles off. I have seen also in aeroplane there are many people I have seen in England many workers or gentlemen, they are coming from Glasgow to London for working by aeroplane. So we have created a civilization that we have created a facility for transport by motor car or by aeroplane, but side by side we have created another difficulty that a man has to go to his war three hundred miles away, side by side. Formerly a man used to walk on his field a few steps from his house. Now we have created facility of transport, therefore we have to go to work three hundred miles away from home. This is the position. But they have no brain. They are thinking, they are advancing. Advancing in this way that on my livelihood I have to go three hundred miles, three hours at least, not less than three hours, or six hours. I have to spoil. Then I can go to my office. Then I work there whole day and again come, again six hours. Then I come at night to sleep along with my family for three hours. 
This is our facility. There is a story, not story, it is a fact. One day, one grown-up child was asking his mother, who is this gentleman? The father was there. So the mother said, he is your father, my dear child. So he did not see his father until he grew three years or four years old. Because when he was child, the father was rising early in the morning. At that time child was sleeping. And he was going to office. And when he comes back, the child was sleeping. So unless the child grew four years old, he could not see his father. Is it not the position of this? It is a story or an instruction. Because the man, the gentleman was going off his island in the morning. They let me still. They start at six o'clock from home to catch the first stand. We have seen in Calcutta. First stand, they seven o'clock and they come in Calcutta after two hours and nine o'clock. Then attend office. And again he catches another train, five o'clock, he goes late at night. And Bombay has big, big cities. This is the position. So we are advancing in science, but at the same time, the so-called science, at the same time we are creating many disadvantages, many disadvantages. From practical experience I say that when I came to a country, in India it is very difficult to get a telephone. You have to wait in the waiting list at least for two years. Or you have to bribe the authorities, say five thousand, two thousand, like that. When I got this facility of telephone, because that as soon as I deposited forty dollars, forty dollars, the next day the telephone was in my room. So I was very glad. But after getting my telephone, I was disturbed always. <laughs> Some of my students asking, phoning me, cleaning, cleaning, <laughs> and, Samiji, how are you feeling at twelve o'clock at night? So try to understand the so-called facility of the modern science means creating so many difficulties also. That is the position. That time formerly a preacher could not come to your country, say, fifty years or hundred years ago. So he was preaching within his limit. But we have got not facilities, so we are preaching everywhere. So from Krishna consciousness we can utilize all facilities in the proper channel, but not material. Now we are utilizing this facility of aeroplane. That means we are getting good chance for serving Krishna. But others, materialists, they are getting this facility so that his child cannot recognize him. So we can take all facilities. Therefore we are actually utilizing the scientific improvement for the benefit of the people. The karmis, they cannot. They are in difficulties. So the sankha philosophy, sankha philosophy is analytical study of the elements of creation. Sammakhyate. Sammak means completely cat. So how? First of all there was vibration, then from vibration there was sky, creation, beginning of creation, and then from sky there was sound, then from sound there was air, then from air there was electricity or fire, 
then from electricity there was water, and from water there is land. This is shortly described. Then how this mind is created, intelligence is created, how the control are created, these are described in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam also in many places. So it is not that we are simply chanting and dancing. That is the ultimate goal of life. But we know how this creation has taken place, how it is being maintained, how it will be annihilated, what will happen after annihilation. Everything we know by the Sankha philosophy. But they do not know. The so-called scientists, they are troubled of what will happen next. So Kopila Muni is incarnation of God. He describes the Sankha philosophy and Bhakti Yoga in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. His instructions are there. He was giving instruction to his mother, Devahuti. His father left him under the care of the mother. He went to forest for liberation. So when he grew up, he instructed his mother. Kapila Deva is known as Devahiti Putra, the son of Devahiti. All incarnation of God is famous especially by Mother's name. Just like Krishna is famous by Jasodhananda, Devaki Nanda. He is very much pleased when his name is made in connection with his mother and father. Nanda Nanda, Vasudeva Nanda. Similarly, here also, Devuhuti Nanda. Devuhuti Putra Kapila. So, this Kapila Deva, Sankha philosophy, has described how the elements came in, how the subtle elements, mind, intelligence, develop, how these gross elements, earth, water, fire, all these gross elements develop. So there are eight elements. They are described in Bhagavad Gita also. Five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. These are gross elements. And the subtle or finer elements are the mind, intelligence, ego. These are eight elements. And the subjects of sense perception and ten sense organs. Ten sense organs, five subject matter of sense perception, fifteen, and these eight elements, material elements, fifteen and eight, twenty-three, and abhok, or the living entity, and then God. In this way, the whole philosophy is described, that is called Sankha philosophy. The Sankha philosophy is always there, kāla vipruta. In due course of time, everything becomes invisible and unknown, just like Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita was spoken long, long ago before speaking to Ojo. Imang vivasati yogaṁ pratvāraḥamaṁ. Therefore all Vedic knowledge, they are not research knowledge. They are existing always since the time of creation. These so-called scientists, they are simply wasting their time by so-called research work. There is nothing to be researched. Everything is there. Every knowledge is there. How to make your life perfect, that is also there. But they would not consult this knowledge. They will try to make research and waste time and waste money, public money, and pass on as they scientists, philosophers, leaders, politicians, and mislead people without any factual knowledge. Now they are thinking at the present moment, the scientists, the things are diminishing. Actually, they diminish. It is already stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is so diminished that there will be no more wheat, no more rice no more food grains, no more fruits, and no more milk, no more sugar. It will finish. Simply you have to eat stones, 
and seeds and flesh. Is that? And the politician will go on exploiting it. Everything is written there in the Srimad Bhagavata. You consult twelfth canto, beginning from second chapter, you will see all these things are mentioned. People will decrease their span of life, their intelligence, memory, their propensity for mercifulness and duration of life. So many things that will be reduced. You are seeing them being reduced. And people are becoming vagabonds. Uh, that is also stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when I first read in India this statement, Lavannam Kesadharanam, that in this age, dwindling age, people will think of himself. One will think he has become very beautiful by keeping long hair. That is also mentioned. So when I came to your country, I saw these young people are keeping long hairs. So I immediately it was corroborated. I said, man, everything is described there. The dampatte roti me vohi, husband and wife, relationship means sex. This is the age. As soon as the husband will be unable to satisfy his wife by sex, the wife find out another husband and find divorce. These are stated already in the Srimad Bhagavad. And these are happening. And a man, when he leaves for twenty to thirty years, he will be considered grand old man. These, these are all stated. So why research? You concern Vedic literature. You have got all information, everything, how the world is created, how it will be annihilated, how it is being maintained, who is the supreme in this management, everything is there. That is called Sankha philosophy. 